OK, but the first one I'm going to talk about is actually this one here, this overview of all objects. And the way it works in IFC is that, uh, again, if I can sketch something out here, imagine you had uh, an element um, that describes your building. So we'll call this B for building. And we can have various stories in our building. So we have one story over here, and we have another story over here. Uh, IFC lets you create a relationship between these two to form a sentence that says, this story is part of my building, something like that. Um, and it can also say that this building is then part of my site. Or my site might have multiple buildings on it, for example. Uh, actually, it would probably be, be drawn like that if I were to be pedantic. And and within my story, it will have various spaces. And it might have multiple spaces, and so on. Uh, but then we would also have other things. It might have a road, for example. It might have a tunnel. It might have a bridge. It might have a pedestrian sidewalk or a curb. Uh, it might have a railway line. It might have uh, all of these other things. And IFC gives you this dictionary to work with and these sort of rules that let you connect this, the nouns together. And this is one of the most important things uh, in a BIM model. This And IFC calls this the spatial decomposition. And the rule is that the spatial decomposition must always look like a tree. It's a hierarchy. So you can see how it, it starts from something that's very big, and it goes down into smaller and smaller things. And you're not allowed to go back up, for example. You can't do that. It's a one-way hierarchy. And that means that every single object, uh, down to a nut or a bolt or a, uh, a wall, is placed somewhere in this hierarchy. And in Blender, you can see that here in the spatial decomposition tab. And it's one of the very first things you see just after you've opened up a project. And you can see over here, we have in our project, we have one site and one building. And then in our building, we have one, two, three, four, five, six stories. And that, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a little embarrassing on the sample model here because uh, this would actually be the name of our site. In this case, it's named Surface 411452, which is probably nonsensical. Uh, and then we have the name of our building. And typically, a building might have a short code name or a long name. In this case, they're both identical, which is also not very uh, ideal. And then we have six stories here. But as you can tell, this is not a six-story house. So that's also uh, not quite not very good either. Um, but that that shows that there is a problem in data quality. But if you imagine for a moment that you were somebody looking at buildings for building compliance, the number of stories makes a, a big a big difference. The number of buildings, the class of the building, the occupancy of the building, that makes a huge uh, impact. So having your building accurately described is really important. Where the site is, you know, if you're linking it back to some sort of um, uh, government uh, controlled uh, land ownership or plot. Um, that's also really important to figure out the ownership. If, if, you're, if we're moving towards a future where all our BIM models become connected uh, together in, into this kind of digital city, having appropriate sites and lot boundaries are really important, not surface 411452. Um, yeah, so I guess what this is demonstrating is this hierarchy. And I guess the lack of attention people currently have on it, which is really quite a shame. So if you're doing building code compliance, that's one of the first things you look for. If you're doing uh, project feasibility, that's one of the first things you look for. You want to know how many buildings can I put on here? Uh, what's the square meterage of each building? What are the spaces I can put on them? Um, you want to know if you are uh, selling a, a building or if you are managing a facility, you'll also want to know uh, where all your buildings and levels are. So having a level like um, roof line or ceiling is is definitely not correct. Cool. So I guess that's the first concept 
that many people come across in IFC known as the spatial decomposition. And um, yeah, it's also possible to visually see it if, if we're lucky. So we can go and isolate various um, things. So that's our foundation. And you can see that's not quite right. I mean, we have uh, some lights in our foundation. So if you wanted to do any sort of um, work breakdown structure or cost breakdown structure, or some sort of elemental breakdown for carbon takeoff, or any sort of facility management um, uh, asset location uh, breakdown, or uh, some sort of asset location code, or if you want to do, um, uh, sorry, my mind's drawing a blank here. Uh, but all of these things need some sort of uh, hierarchy. And so getting an see hierarchy uh, that is really well vetted means that whenever you create a model breakdown or a cost breakdown or a work breakdown, uh, they all can link off these highly uh, uh, controlled and audited uh, locations. So this foundation, you know, it would be excellent if this were correct, because then you could use it as part of your um, automatic um, uh, your automatic work breakdown structures. Uh, let's take a look at this one over here. That's level one. Yeah, and then we have another level one. Not really fantastic, I would say. Uh, then we have a ceiling, which is not really quite a ceiling. Uh, level two. And finally, our roof line. So uh, definitely needs a little bit of work. Cool. So I guess inside every single um, uh, th this concept known as the spatial decomposition concept in IFC uh, lets you basically link from a large space down into smaller spaces. Once you've created your spatial decomposition, and what I'm showing here is fairly typical for a building, uh, but for infrastructure, you'll have more things. Then when you actually have physical objects, such as your walls and doors and whatever, uh, they will all be contained within it. So you can have a wall, for example, that is in your building, or you would have uh, a pump that is in your space. And this is a different type of object with a different type of relationship, but it's, um, they are interrelated. And so this allows you to say that uh, this wall is in the building and the building is on a site, is, uh, makes up a site. And that's what this uh, panel shows over here that you can go and uh, in my foundation, I have four types of objects. Uh, sorry, four um, class of, of objects. I have some walls. I have some slabs. Um, so these are my slabs. That's my wall, which is, I guess, a little strange partition wall. Uh, I have uh, some light fixtures and I have some distribution ports, <laughs> I guess, for the light fixtures. Um, that's right. So I guess that that's what this breakdown is showing you. Cool. Any questions so far? No. All crystal clear. Go on. Great. Um, yeah, I guess that's it for the spatial decomposition concept. It's, it's really quite straightforward. It's just a way to... Of, linking spaces together. Um, and the reason why I usually introduce this as the first concept in IFC is because if you can think of IFC as a big network of objects connected together with relationships, uh, like a big web of objects like this, um, it's, it's very similar to what computer people might call a graph database. And if you just think of a whole bunch of objects floating around in, in space with relationships, uh, with them, uh, and a computer saying, how do I interpret this big mass of data? Uh, the way IFC deals with that is that there is one special object known as the IFC project. And that becomes your starting point uh, into your entire big database of um, objects that describe your, your BIM world. And everything sooner or later is indirectly connected back, uh, directly or indirectly connected back to this project. So I guess those are two little concepts you'll find in IFC. The first is that every IFC model will have one 
and only one project that is your starting point, and then everything else branches off from that. And the most interesting branch, which you'll want to investigate first, is almost certainly going to be the spatial decomposition branch, which links to a space shown in blue. And then finally, from your space, it will link to a physical element shown in red. So if sometimes you see people drawing these types of diagrams in IFC, that's really what they're saying. They're saying, this is how the computer links together things. But yeah, I guess this is what it looks like in an interface. <laughs> but it's really the same thing. 